In this video, I'll walk through lab number 10 from the flackbox.com Cisco CCNA lab guide, which is a free download. You can get it at flackbox.com. Um, this is lab number 10, and it's entitled IGP or Interior Gateway Protocol Fundamentals Configuration. And it says, in this lab, you will configure the RIP version 2 and EIGRP routing protocols. And it says IP addresses are already configured on the routers. I've labeled everything, so let's get rolling. Um, step one, we want to enable RIP version 2 on every router. Ensure all networks except 203.0.1.1.3.0, which is here, are advertised. Do not perform any summarization. All right, um, since we're going to do it on every router, let's open up Notepad so we can cut and paste this. And the commands we're going to want to use, first we're going to want to use enable, and then comp t. Uh, enable will get us into privilege exec mode. Comp t will get us into global configuration mode. Then we need to set, tell it which protocol. So the protocol will be rip. So the command is router rip. We're going to tell it the version number we want, which is going to be version 2. We don't want auto summary. So we're going to do no auto summary. Um, auto summary, I believe, is when it, um, if you don't, uh define for the protocol the um subnet um i think it has to do with it automatically will go to the classful boundaries so like abc um boundaries not 100 percent pause about that but i think that's what that is but i know we don't want it because typically you're not going to have um in this case we do but a lot of times you'll have like slash 23 slash 21 networks that'll be different so it's good to get in the habit of using no auto summary. Um, the next thing we have to do is uh, tell it the network that we want it to work on, which is going to be the 10 network, so 10.0.0.0. And I think the, um, I think we could put um, a reverse subnet here, but you don't need it because it'll do it by default. But again, I need to study this a little bit better. Um, so let's then do, that should be everything. So let's copy that. And let's start with router one. And we'll go to the command line and we'll hit enter. And then we're gonna paste that series of commands. Hit enter, that should be done. Uh, so we're then to router two. And we'll hit enter, we're gonna paste that. So again, uh, en or enable gets us into global configuration mode. I mean, into privilege exec mode, comp t, which is configure terminal gets us into global configuration mode, which is here, um, then you're designating the uh, routing protocol you want, which is RIP, the version of the protocol, we don't want auto summary, and the network we want it running on. All right, so we'll hit enter for that. And that's router two, let's go to router three. We're gonna go to the command line, and let's hit enter. We'll paste that in again, hit enter. Uh, router four. And pull the command line up and we will paste that in, hit enter. And one final router to do this on is going to be router five. And we will paste that there and that should be done. So it said enable rip on every router. Um, we did that. So next we want to verify all networks are in the router's routing tables. So we could go to, we'll start, we'll just use uh, R1 as an example. I won't go through every router. We'll just, hopefully I did everything right. Um, so we're gonna hit N to go back into privilege exec mode. I'm gonna do show IP route to see the routing table. And let's see if it knows of everything. So router one, um, pull this over a little bit. So router one is aware of the 10.0.0.0 network, the 10.0.1.0 network, which is here, the 10.02 network, which is here, the 10.03 network, which is here, so these are all done. Um, router 1 is also aware of the 10.100 network, which is this one, the 10.110 network here, the 10.12, and the 10.13 networks. Um, so it knows all of the 10 networks, so that's good. And we'll just assume that all the other routers know those too, just to save a minute on the video. It says verify that routing is working by checking that PC1 has connectivity to PC2. Three. So to check connectivity, we're going to go into command prompt and we're going to ping 10.1.2.10, which is uh, PC3 over here from PC1. So it's pinging. Let's see what the result is. The first request timed out, probably an ARP 
uh, which is address resolution protocol, but then we have connectivity. So we had it successful. Um, so next we want to ensure that all routes have a route to the 203.0.113.0 network, which is here. And internal routes must not be advertised to the service provider, which is here at 203.0.1132. Um, so we need to add the 203.0.113.0 network as a whole um, to RIP on R4. And we need to make sure, because it says uh, internal routes must not be advertised, so we need to make interface um, 1, 1 on router 4 a passive interface so in, so internal network information won't be sent to the ISP. So traffic will still flow, but it's not going to advertise information to the ISP from the internal network, and that's what we want. Uh, we don't want uh, internal network information being passed. Um, so let's uh, get that started. We got to go to comp T, and we need to uh, we're going to use the RIP protocol. And we want to make it a passive interface. I just uh, tab completed that. And then it's going to be for fast Ethernet uh, interface 1.1. One, one. Uh, right, well, that looks good. Let me open this up a little bit. All right, and then we need to designate this network over here. So that's going to be network um, 203.0.113.0. Yep. Um, there we go. That's done. And we ensured all routers have a route. Okay, so they'll have a route. If they can get to R4, they'll have a route out. And we're not sharing information. All right, so that should be good. Verify that all routers have a path to the 203 network. So we'll just go to R1 and we're going to pull up the uh, routing table. Pull this out. You can see previously there was no listing for the 203 network. So now we're going to just up arrow to pull re, to pull that command back up, show IP route. We're going to look at our routing tables, and now it has one. And it's got a path this way. Um, I'm not going to do that on every router. I'm just going to assume I have everything right. Um, next, we want to configure a default static route on router 4 to the internet via the service provider 203.0.1.1.3.2. Um, so we're going to create a static route and a default static route. Um, so let's exit down one level to global configuration mode. And what we want to do is basically we're going to tell it, um, we're going to make like a, a default route that says, hey, if you can't find what you're looking for in any other route, go this way is basically what it is. So the command is IP route and um, we need to do 0.0.0.0, which just means anything. Um, and then 0.0.0.0 is a subnet mask. Again, anything. And then 203.0.113.2. So we're basically telling it, hey, any route uh, or any IP address that you're trying to find that you can't find on another route, go this way through the 203.0.113.2 uh, interface over here. So that should take care of that. And then we configured the static route on R4. Um, let's go to seven. Ensure that all other routers learn via RIP how to reach the internet. All right, so we should see, um, well, let's just go look at router one, for example. And we're gonna pull up. So router one uh, had no gateway of last resort set. And this is all it knew about it just knew about the, uh, it did know about the 203.0.113.0 uh, network, which is over here. So let's pull up the show IP route command again. And um, so it does see the 203 network. Ensure all other routers learn via RIP how to reach the internet. Um, so I think this line here, although it was already in there, is what we're looking for. Um, let me do show IP route one more time just to make sure it propagated everything. Looked like it did. 
Um, I guess the way we would ensure that they, um, oh, okay. So ensure that all other routers, okay. We got to tell the routers about this. Um, so we have to go to, uh, R4, which is router four. Um, and we have to tell it to tell the other routers. So to do that, we go router. And again, the protocol we're doing is rip. Um, I'll hit enter and we're going to do, um, default information originate is the command. And this is injecting a static route into rip and you'll see, uh, in a second here, what all that means. So it was just, um, set the protocol. We're saying we're, we're going to work with router, the protocol rip, and we want default information originate is the command. Um, now it says, yeah, verify all routers have a route to the internet. So now let's look at it. So that should have done it. So again, no gateway of last resort, no information other than just the network there. We're going to do a show IP route. All right. See now a gateway of last resort has been set. So we injected a static route on R4, which was then advertised to the other routers. And you can see here it is uh, via rip and that static route of uh, 0 .0 .0 .0, um is now available. And we'll assume it's available on all the other routers. And all we had to do was issue the commands here on router four and then it advertised it to the rest for us. So um, that was taken care of. So that verified the routers have a route. All right, let's work to EIGRP configuration. It says enable. EIGRP AS or Autonomous System 100 on every router. Ensure all networks except 203 are advertised in EIGRP. Um, so to do that, we're going to do every router. So I'm going to pull up Notepad again, and I'm going to use that to cut and paste. So again, we're going to go with router, and we're going to tell it we want the EIGRP protocol, and then we're going to assign a number of 100. Um, the autonomous system or AS number um, just has to match uh, for EIGRP enabled routers to uh, form adjacencies with each other. So if you had one that was 100 and another that was 90 and they were connected, they're not going to share the EIGRP information with each other. So that number has to match. And I don't know if, if there's like a range of numbers you can use or not, but I know 100 is safe. Um, and then for the network we want it on is the 10.0.0.0 network. And that should enable EIGRP on every router. So let's quickly do that. We will copy, we will paste, we'll go to, um, paste it here. Oh, and I got to go to control U and we got to go to comp T, which is global configuration mode. And then let's paste that in. Hit enter. That's router one. EIGRP is done. Let's go to router two. We're going to go exit to drop down one level to global configuration. We'll paste that in. And you can see it's formed an adjacency. And then router three, uh, exit down a level to global configuration. We'll paste. We'll hit enter. Again, it formed a new adjacency. That's good. Uh, we'll go to router four. Uh, drop down to global config. We'll hit paste, hit enter, formed a new adjacency. So everything's working and router five, drop down a level and paste. And we should hit enter. And again, a new adjacency is formed. So that's good. So, um, for step number nine, nine, we enabled EIGRP with an autonomous system number of hundred on every router and sure all networks except the two or three network are advertised. So, um, all, we know all networks are advertised because of this command right here, network 10, uh, zero dot zero dot zero, which will encompass all the, the 10 networks that are up here. Okay. So, um, we go to step 10, verify the routers have formed adjacencies with each other. Okay. So we'll go to router one and two, uh, you need to basically be looking at the neighbor information or if there is neighbor information. So, um, we'll do. Uh, N to get down to privilege exec mode and the command is show IP and then the uh, EIGRP which is the protocol we're interested in and then neighbors is the command and you can see it did form adjacencies 
So router one has an adjacency to 10.0.0.2 and 10.0.3.2, 10 10.0.3.2. So we'll assume it's working on the other routers. I won't go through every one. Um, verify the routers, okay. So number 11 says, which routing protocol, RIP or EIGRP, do you expect routes to the 10 networks to be learned from in the routing tables? So although we had RIP and EIGRP, um, when routers, routers do have like two steps. First, they determine um, which protocol to use based on what's called administrative distance. After they've determined the protocol, then they look at the metric of that protocol to determine the best route to include in the table. So with administrative distance, the lower the number, the better as far as the router is concerned. So in the case of EIGRP, it has an administrative distance of 90, whereas RIP has an administrative distance of 120, I believe. And so we should see EIGRP uh, in the routing table. So um, let's look at that. Open that back up and the command is show IP route. And let's see what we find. We'll hit enter. And if you look up here under codes, you'll see D is EIGRP. And sure enough, we see lots of EIGRP routes uh, with a couple of exceptions. So this is the uh, still RIP, uh, which was advertising uh, 203.0 network. And um, so that'll stay in there because uh, we set up um, router four to inject a static route. Um, so that's going to be there and a static route. Um, so yeah, that makes sense. I believe that should, that, that seems right to me. And it says, do you expect to see any routes from other routing protocols in the routing table? Um, well, we do. And I think the reason is, uh, because this is an, a static route that was injected from router four. So that's gonna, a static route, um, it actually has a lower administrative distance value of the other routing protocols. Um, I don't remember. It's like two, but I'm not sure. So I'm going to kind of move past that. All right. So we're at number 12. Do you expect? Okay. So yeah, we did see those. And then it says view the routing tables to verify your answers, which we did. And that's here. And we see it did switch over to EIGRP because its administrative distance is 90, which is the first number you'll see here compared to RIP, who has an administrative distance of 120. So the lower AD or administrative distance number is better as far as the router is concerned. After it looks at that, it'll look at the metric. Um, so the metric is listed after the AD number. So this is the metric for EIGRP. This is the metric for RIP. All right, verify the routing tables. And that looks like it's it because the next step, next page is the answer key. So that's it for this video. This was lab number 10. Uh, again, from the Flackbox free CCNA uh, lab guide that you can download. Hope you enjoyed it and I'll see you in the next video.